Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland, located in Lothian on the southern shore of the Firth of Forth. It is the second most populous city in Scotland and the seventh most populous in the United Kingdom. The most recent official population estimates are 464,990 for the city of Edinburgh itself and 492,680 for the local authority area. Edinburgh lies at the heart of the Edinburgh and southeast Scotland city region with a population in 2014 of 1,339,380 recognized as the capital of Scotland since at least the 15th century. Edinburgh is home to the Scottish Parliament and the seat of the monarchy in Scotland. The city is also the annual venue of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland and home to national institutions such as the National Museum of Scotland, the National Library of Scotland and the Scottish National Gallery. It is the largest financial centre in the UK after London. The city has long been known as a centre of education, particularly in the fields of medicine, Scots law, literature, the sciences and engineering. The University of Edinburgh, founded in 1582 and now one of four in the city, was placed 17th in the QS World University rankings in 2013 and 2014. The city is also famous for the Edinburgh International Festival and the Fringe, the latter being the largest annual international arts festival in the world. The city's historical and cultural attractions have made it the second most popular tourist destination in the United Kingdom after London, attracting over one million overseas visitors each year. Historic sites in Edinburgh include Edinburgh Castle, Holyrood Palace, the Churches of St. Giles, Greyfriars and the Cannon Gate, and the extensive Georgian New Town, built in the 18th century. Etymology Eden, the root of the city's name, is most likely of Britonic Celtic origin, from the Cumbric language or a variation of it that would have been spoken by the earliest known people of the area, an Iron Age tribe known to the Romans as the Votardini, and latterly in sub-Roman history as the god Odin. It appears to derive from the place name Iden mentioned in the old Welsh epic poem Why God Odin. The poem names Dinidon as a hill fort in the territory of the god Odin. The change in nomenclature, from Dinidon to Edinburgh, reflects changes in the local language from Cumbrook to Old English. The Germanic language of the Anglian kingdom of Bernicia that permeated the area from the mid-7th century and is regarded as the ancestor of modern Scots. The Celtic element din was dropped and replaced by the Old English burr. The first documentary evidence of the medieval borough is a royal charter, c. 1124-1127, by King David I granting a toft in Burgo Mio de Dinisburg to the Priory of Dunfermline. History Early history The earliest known human habitation in the Edinburgh area is from Cramond where evidence was found of a Mesolithic campsite dated to c. 8500 BC. Traces of later Bronze Age and Iron Age settlements have been found on Castle Rock, Arthur's Seat, Craiglock Hart Hill and the Pentland Hills. When the Romans arrived in Lothian at the end of the 1st century AD, they discovered a Celtic Britonic tribe whose name they recorded as the Votardini. At some point before the 7th century AD, the god Odin, who were presumably descendants of the Votardini, built the hill fort of Din Iden or Eton. Although its exact location has not been identified, it seems more than likely they would have chosen a commanding position like the Castle Rock or Arthur's Seat or Calton Hill. In 638 AD the god Odin stronghold was besieged by forces loyal to King Oswald of Northumbria, and around this time control of Lothian passed to the Angles. Their influence continued for the next three centuries until around 950 AD, when, during the reign of Indulf, son of Constantine II, the Burr, named in the 10th century Pictish chronicle as Oppidamedon, fell to the Scots and thenceforth remained under their jurisdiction. 
The royal borough was founded by King David I in the early 12th century on land belonging to the crown, though the precise date is unknown. By the middle of the 14th century, the French chronicler Jean Froissart was describing it as the capital of Scotland, and James III referred to it in the 15th century as the principal borough of our kingdom. Despite the destruction caused by an English assault in 1544, the town slowly recovered, and was at the centre of events in the 16th century Scottish Reformation and 17th century Wars of the Covenant. 17th century In 1603, King James VI of Scotland succeeded to the English throne, uniting the crowns of Scotland and England in a personal union known as the Union of the Crowns, though Scotland remained, in all other respects, a separate kingdom. In 1638, King Charles I's attempt to introduce Anglican church forms in Scotland encountered stiff Presbyterian opposition culminating in the conflicts of the Wars of the Three Kingdoms. Subsequent Scottish support for Charles Stuart's restoration to the throne of England resulted in Edinburgh's occupation by Oliver Cromwell's Commonwealth of England forces, the New Model Army, in 1650. In the 17th century, the boundaries of Edinburgh were still defined by the city's defensive town walls. As a result, expansion took the form of the houses increasing in height to accommodate a growing population. Buildings of 11 stories or more were common, and have been described as forerunners of the modern-day skyscraper. Most of these old structures were later replaced by the predominantly Victorian buildings seen in today's old town. 18th century in 1706 and 1707, the Acts of Union were passed by the Parliaments of England and Scotland uniting the two kingdoms into the Kingdom of Great Britain. As a consequence, the Parliament of Scotland merged with the Parliament of England to form the Parliament of Great Britain, which sat at Westminster in London. The Union was opposed by many Scots at the time, resulting in riots in the city. By the first half of the 18th century, despite rising prosperity evidenced by its growing importance as a banking centre, Edinburgh was being described as one of the most densely populated, overcrowded and unsanitary towns in Europe. Visitors were struck by the fact that the various social classes shared the same urban space even inhabiting the same tenement buildings, although here a form of social segregation did prevail, whereby shopkeepers and tradesmen tended to occupy the cheaper to rent cellars and garrets, while the more well-to-do professional classes occupied the more expensive middle stories. During the Jacobite Rising of 1745, Edinburgh was briefly occupied by the Jacobite Highland Army before its march into England. After its eventual defeat at Culloden, there followed a period of reprisals and pacification, largely directed at the rebellious clans. In Edinburgh, the town council, keen to emulate London by initiating city improvements and expansion to the north of the castle, reaffirmed its belief in the union and loyalty to the Hanoverian monarch George III by its choice of names for the streets of the new town, for example, Rose Street and Thistle Street, and for the royal family. George Street, Queen Street, Hanover Street, Frederick Street and Princes Street. In the second half of the century, the city was at the heart of the Scottish Enlightenment, when thinkers like David Hume, Adam Smith, James Hutton and Joseph Black were familiar figures in its streets. Edinburgh became a major intellectual centre, earning it the nickname Athens of the North because of its many neoclassical buildings and reputation for learning, similar to ancient Athens. In the 18th century novel The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett one character describes Edinburgh as a hotbed of genius, from the 1770s onwards. The professional and business classes gradually deserted the old town in favour of the more elegant, one-family, residences of the new town. 
a migration that changed the social character of the city. According to the foremost historian of this development, unity of social feeling was one of the most valuable heritages of Old Edinburgh, and its disappearance was widely and properly lamented. 19th and 20th centuries Although Edinburgh's traditional industries of printing, brewing and distilling continued to grow in the 19th century and were joined by new rubber works and engineering works there was little industrialisation compared with other cities in Britain. By 1821, Edinburgh had been overtaken by Glasgow as Scotland's largest city. The city centre between Prince's Street and George Street became a major commercial and shopping district, a development partly stimulated by the arrival of railways in the 1840s. The old town became an increasingly dilapidated, overcrowded slum with high mortality rates. Improvements carried out under Lord Provost William Chambers in the 1860s began the transformation of the area into the predominantly Victorian old town seen today. More improvements followed in the early 20th century as a result of the work of Patrick Geddes, but relative economic stagnation during the two world wars and beyond saw the old town deteriorate further before major slum clearance in the 1960s and 1970s began to reverse the process. University building developments which transformed the George Square and Pottero areas proved highly controversial. Since the 1990s a new financial district, including a new Edinburgh International Conference Centre, has grown mainly on demolished railway property to the west of the castle, stretching into Fountain Bridge, a run-down 19th-century industrial suburb which has undergone radical change since the 1980s with the demise of industrial and brewery premises. This ongoing development has enabled Edinburgh to maintain its place as the second largest financial and administrative centre in the United Kingdom. After London, financial services now account for a third of all commercial office space in the city. The development of Edinburgh Park, a new business and technology park covering 38 acres, four miles west of the city centre, has also contributed to the District Council's strategy for the city's a major economic regeneration. In 1998, the Scotland Act, which came into force the following year, established a devolved Scottish Parliament and Scottish Executive. Both based in Edinburgh, they are responsible for governing Scotland while reserved matters such as defence, taxation and foreign affairs remain the responsibility of the Parliament of the United Kingdom in London.